Amen. Welcome to church. Good to see everyone. And welcome to Hollywood Baptist Church. If you're watching with us, we welcome you also. Amen. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're having a great week. Ready to worship the Lord this morning. You believe our Savior lives. You believe that? Say amen. Amen. I'll see this guy. Our God will reign forever. Still I will say 
Who blessed be the name of the Lord? Who blessed be your name? Who blessed be the name of the Lord? Who blessed be your glorious name? Blessed be your name when the sun shining down on me when the world. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. On the road marked with suffering, there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I can turn back to me. Oh, in the time Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Amen. You may be seated, Pastor. watching this morning we're glad that you're watching tune in with us today uh, we have a lot of sickness but thank god we're able to be here today amen yeah. we need to pray for those who are sick i got a call from brother roy uh, he and beverly uh come down with the COVID, so be praying for him uh kelly his son doesn't have it but anyway just a lot of folk are sick some of them are coming out on the tail end of it and have gone through it but we're glad you're here uh, be smart be smart be wise uh don't don't panic amen you want to wear a mask you wear a mask if you want to do hand you bring hand, you do whatever you're comfortable doing okay but i hope you're comfortable staying here and not staying at home bless you see there uh, give that lady a mask okay all right let me let me give you some quick announcements here okay the flowers today are furnished by myself and my wife in honor of two special september birthdays abby jarrett of saturday and matt's birthday on monday thank you and wishing y'all happy happy birthday today is grandparents day how many i'm not gonna make you stand up because you're old how many grandparents do we have in here let me see your hand Woo! now that is one intelligent did y'all see that Amen. that's one intelligent looking group of people right there that's what i'm saying and we're gonna have a baby dedication at the end of the service too so we're excited about that okay uh starting a four-week series next week entitled uh did you know and one we're asking next week is did you know that you can be forgiven of anything did you know some people don't believe that some people think well boy if i've done this and god will never forgive me that that's not what the word of god teaches amen so we'll have fun with that and appreciate it. now um we tried to do our small group kickoff last wednesday we didn't do it because we got going through the road uh, we are going to do it this wednesday uh and so we have i think about 32 or 33 people signed up if you've not signed up to be in a small group this coming Wednesday, just see me afterwards, sign up over there. Uh, we're gonna, we are going to serve pizza for you. Uh, we're going to meet in here in the auditorium for about 10 minutes, except for the teens. They know where they meet, know where they have. Johnny's got that. Uh, we're going to meet in here, divide the groups up, and it will be pizza for you. Then you'll go and you can talk and greet and meet for about 20, 30 minutes there in your class. 
and then next week we'll start the lessons, okay? And so again, we're glad you're here this morning. We're glad you're, you're tuned in with us this morning. Let's just, uh, let's stand for a word of prayer. Can we do that? Let's just stand for a word of prayer. <clears throat> Thank you all for up here, the musicians, playing and singing for us today. Let's pray together. Father, we come to you today. We thank you for the Lord Jesus. We thank you for your blessings of life. And Lord, we do pray for those who are in our church family here who are sick. Lord, other folks across our city who are sick with this virus and other things that God, that you would be the great physician, that you would give healing, you'd give protection. Father, I pray that uh, we not have to walk around and live in fear, uh, but Lord, help us to be intelligent in the way we try to guard ourselves and take care of ourselves. Lord, thank you for our church family. Lord, we pray the rest of this service. You'll be with Brother Johnny now as he leads us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me say thank you to Johnny right now. He's not through, but he and Rick, uh, uh, who was helping you? Ronnie. Uh, yeah, there you are, Ronnie. Uh, and been working on the ladies' restroom in there, okay? So if you got a, you can't, there's one in the first nursery, okay? So ladies, you're right down the street and appreciate that. Brother Johnny, guys, thank y'all. Come on, let's have some more music. Well, amen. As we stand and continue to worship, <clears throat> this next song is called Forever Rain, and I just love the chorus and the picture of what it talks about, about running in the arms, to the arms of Jesus, amen? It talks about running to his arms and the riches of his love will always be enough. Do you believe that this morning? The riches of God's love will always be enough, no matter what we're going through, no matter what uh, we're currently going through or we've gone through or we're going to go through. His, his, the Bible also says his mercies are new every day. I hope you believe that this morning. Amen. Let's see this together. You are good. You are good. When there's nothing good in me, love, you are love, and it's made for all to see, you are light, you are light, when the darkness closes in, you are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sins. He is peace this morning. You are peace, you are peace When my fear is crippling You are true, you are true Even in my wandering You are joy, you are joy You're the reason that I sing You are life, you are life In you death has lost its sting Jesus. 
God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great. you so much this morning, Lord. We know you are great. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. Father, we thank you for bringing each and every person here this morning. Thank you for those that are watching this morning as well, Lord. I pray you'll speak to hearts like only you can. Lord, we invite the Holy Spirit in this morning. Lord, we know your word says in Matthew, where two or more are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst. Lord, we know you are here with us. Lord, I pray you'll speak to hearts in a mighty way. Be our pastor as he brings the word. Lord, encourage us. Keep all distractions outside of this place this morning. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you for who you are. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Thank you, guys and ladies. Thank you, Johnny. <clears throat> thank you, Brother Josh. If you have your Bibles, go to Matthew chapter 14 with me. Matthew chapter 14. <clears throat> I want you to listen today with all your heart. <clears throat> Young people, I want you to listen. A lot of times we, we get messages and we think, well, I mean, I wish teenagers, I wish I could say more about teenagers in there. And, and Johnny does a great job and those that work with him and getting the word out of there with a youth department. But this message today, I believe, can fit any age. I looked at it, I found it about two weeks ago and I've been reading it and praying over it and changed it around a little bit. And, I preached it in 1989. Golly, I'm old. <clears throat> Never Watch it, Kelly. <clears throat> Never preached it since then. How to deal with your losses. How to deal with your losses. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 14, verse 12. Matthew 14, verse 12 down through verse 14. We're talking about John the Baptist here. And his disciples came and took up the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. The body they just buried was John the Baptist. Verse 13 and 14. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence into a desert place <clears throat> apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot and out of the cities. Verse 14. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude. And he was moved with compassion towards them. And he healed their sick. There's a statement on your outline at the top that simply says this, everyone loses sometime. Everyone loses sometime. Amen? Back in 1989, when the stock market hit and crunched and fell, took a great fall, I read about some different people, how they responded to that. One man, after losing billions of dollars, not millions, but billions of dollars, said this, the owner, matter of fact, it was Sam Walton, the owner of Walmart, said something that I think has helped me, may help you, said, it isn't anything, talking about the money, it isn't anything but paper. There's a lot more where that come from. And that's not a thing in the world but paper. He said, you don't cry over spilt milk, you just put more cream on the cup. I also read about another man who made a bad investment during that time and within about 24 hours, he had lost 
$300,000. Everything he had was gone. He didn't have a dime left. The man was very bitter. Uh, people knew him, said he, his heart was, was overflowed with grief and sorrow, and he was mad, he was bitter, and he's also a profession Christian, okay? Now, I read that, and I thought about this. Well, I'm glad God doesn't let me have all that kind of money, amen? I mean, money make a fool out of most people, amen? There, 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 there are some advantages of being a poor boy. The uh, Bible says, to whom much is given, much is required. A after several months of trying to cope with that, this guy still... I, now this is again a few years ago uh, about a year or so after that he still hadn't gotten over it and, and I was talking to somebody who knew him he said I don't know if he'll ever get over something like that but listen you don't have to live under it for the rest of your life either so what's the difference in these two men what's the difference between Sam Walton and blah 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 okay one in so many outline one will get some more the other one will let what he lost kill his ability to get any more Okay, one will get some more. Now, you can apply that in a lot of parts of your life, not just finances. And, but one will let what he lost kill the ability to get any more. Because sitting around and thinking about what could have been kills what should be. Did you hear me? Sitting around thinking about what could have been kills what should be. I'm talking to you this morning about losses, okay? A woman loses her husband in a divorce. A woman loses her husband in a car wreck or loses her daughter who commits suicide or her son who takes an overdose. Now, now, now d don't look at me like that doesn't happen. Amen? It hasn't happened to me, which I thank God for it. I have two grown children, three counting James. Their wives, their husbands and children, one great granddaughter. And I don't know. I don't know, Brother Bill, what I would do if God reached into my family and took one of my kids out. Some of you know because it's happened to you. It's happened to you. I don't know what I'm doing. You, and by the way, before you get real spiritual, you don't know what you do either. You don't know what you do either unless you've experienced it. So, so I, I'm saying don't, don't be so spiritual and, and religious to give everybody sound advice because here's the deal. You might have to take that advice one day. Amen? I thank God by his goodness and his mercy that he's kept me from those dramatic uh, things happening in my life. Uh, there, there are people who, who've gone through some of those losses and they've gotten off into a corner and just shut down. We've had members of the church over the years, man, they'd go through something like this and some of them would just shut down. They, they just shut the door on God. They just walked away from church. They walked away from Christian friends and, and they never get their life back together. I've heard them make statement like this. You won't ever, uh, you won't ever catch me trusting another man. You'll never catch me trusting another woman. The guy that lost that $300,000 said, you'll never catch me exposing my finances to another man. I'm talking about losses this morning. You, you, listen, you can allow your losses to kill your gains by the attitude that you have about your losses. Let me say that again. You can allow your losses, the things that you lose, to kill your gains by the attitude that you have about your losses. Here's one more story. It's on the outline there. Every one of us in this room, when I read this a few weeks ago, went over a few weeks ago, and read it again Saturday, I said, I, I, guess, I, I guess that's true. I, I was trying to work it out in my spirit. But every one of us in this room who are saved can cope with our losses. Now, you might not write that down somewhere because you may be up here today, and you may be sailing along real good. Life may be really good to you. Everything is going well. And bam, bam, tragedy hits. Tragedy hits. I say it does happen. They, they, I mean, <clears throat> please don't think this morning because you're a Christian that you're not going to lose something in life. Because if you live long enough, you will. Amen. You, and, and I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to show you some reality from the Word of God today. You, you, you're going to have to, some situations happen to you that you wished had never, ever happened to you. <clears throat> some of your children would do things that you wish they'd never done, and it will bring losses to your reputation. You will suffer losses. I've suffered them. I will suffer more if the Lord tarries. And listen to me. I like this statement on the outline. It's not what I lose and don't have anymore, 
but it's how I respond to my losses. It's not what I lose and don't have anymore, but it's how I respond to my losses. Life doesn't, life doesn't come to us in a pot of puff fashion. Amen? So, so, some people here today, you, you're looking for everything to be rose petal or rose garden experiences. You say, well, preacher, if I give my life to God, then why did this happen to me? Or, or, or how come this situation, preacher, is like it is? Or, or, or why, preacher? Why did this happen? I Many of you have questions this morning size of this auditorium. Let me say something. The, the whys, and you may try to correct me on this, and, but that's all right. You've been wrong before. Just kidding. But many of us have questions. The, the whys are not going to be answered. All of them are not going to be answered on this side of heaven. Did you know that? Did you know that? And when we get to heaven, God would, will tell us, but you know what? I don't think it'll matter then because we'll be home with our loved ones. We'll be home with our Savior. But all of the whys, God has the answer, and you're not going to go know them, and I'm not going to know all of them until we get there. So my question is not why, God, but rather how or what can I do to recover, okay? So you might want to just jot these notes down uh, for the rest of it. But let me zero in on one main thought today, uh, at least one main thought. And uh, uh, there was a fellow in, we just read about named John the Baptist. We read the section there where the king ordered him to be beheaded and he won't go over there and he buried him. And now John the Baptist is a preacher. He's he, he not a piss, pussyfooter. He's a preacher. Are you listening? He's a sure enough preacher. Matter of fact, uh, John, uh, Herod and his brother Philip's wife Herodias, they had a little drunken party. And old Herod thought he would just take his brother's wife and have his way with her, Okay. And I don't know how, but John the Baptist found out that what was going to happen there, and he told him, he said, hey, it's not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Uh, who, and, and, and can you imagine? And, and uh, uh, I imagine he probably looked at him and said, hey, who are you? Who are you to tell me what I can, I'm the king. What are you, who, what are you telling me for? I imagine, he, I'm just, this is in the original something or other. But uh, he said, hey, I, I'm, John, I'm just John the Baptist. That's all. I, I'm just John the Baptist. I'm just John the Baptizer. I, I, I'm God's man out here in the wilderness eating locusts and wild honey, wearing my camel's hair and preaching the gospel. It doesn't matter who I am. It's still unlawful. <coughs> it's still unlawful. Hey, can I? News flash. 2021. It's still unlawful. You men keep your wives close to you. Don't, don't, don't look at me like it don't happen. You, you keep them close to you. Watch, watch after you're present. Just, just because it's church doesn't make any difference. Watch it real close. And John the Baptist said, it wasn't lawful, and the law hasn't changed. It, it, it ain't right, and it never will be right. I said, how do you feel about it? it it's unlawful. It's unlawful. This brother, the brother wrote it. She, she decided she's going to take that preacher down. Boy, you know... Bless your heart. Some people, not in this church, but some people spend half their life hating a the preacher. They really do. You know, I, it amazes me today. Somebody said, did you know what so-and-so said about you? I said, oh, Lord, honey, if they knew everything about me, I know they'd really say it. Amen? Here, here's the situation over here. They're having this drunken party. Here comes Herodias, a uh, uh, little teenage daughter dancing about half naked in, in front of that pervert. And a mother let, let her do anything. Uh, we've got some ladies in this church. It wouldn't hurt you to take a class on telling your daughters how to dress. Hey, amen, preacher. Amen. I, I mean, by the way, she didn't have much of a daddy either. He didn't, he didn't set no standard. He didn't say, you ain't going to leave this house looking like that. Wonder why things are way hard today. Because mamas and daddies don't have any backbones anymore. He, he didn't know what she would say. So he said, hey, listen, I'll give you anything up to half of my kingdom. Now that's some money, okay? He didn't know she would say, but in her heart, uh, but in the heat of his lust, he made a commitment. 
He said, I'll give you half of my kingdom. And so she went to her mother and basically said, Mom, he said, I could have half. What, what, what do I want? Well, you, got, you think about this. Brother John, you've got to have a cold, cold heart, a stony heart, when, when you will pass up a kingdom for a backslidden preacher. Rather than get half the kingdom, she'd rather have John the Baptist put to death. And that's what happened. Verse 9 says, and she, being instructed of her mother, said, give me uh, here John Baptist's head in a charter. And verse 9, and the king was sorry, nevertheless, for the oath's sake, uh, for them that sat with him, and me he commanded to be given to her. And he sent and beheaded John in prison. Wow. Now, when Jesus heard this, it, 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 it was sort of interesting. By the way, the, the Bible does teach that Jesus and John's part of the same family. J Jesus never said a word about this, though. He really didn't. We read that. And, and so now I want you to notice what Jesus does, and it will teach us how to deal with our losses, okay? Two simple things. Number one, he went to the source of his comfort. He went to the source of his comfort. <clears throat> Pardon me. I read the verses. I'll read them again. 12 and 13, and the disciples came and took up the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. And when Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot. When you find, when you find yourself going through difficulties and losing in a situation, the first thing you must have is somewhere to take your losses and find a source of comfort. Now, don't miss this. If you, if you were to go to your source of comfort, then you must know your source of comfort. You can't go somewhere and see somebody that you don't know. <clears throat> and guys, y'all write these things down. This little old thoughts here will help you minister to some other people. I guarantee you. In, in, in every pew, in every church, there's a broken heart. Many times, many broken hearts, okay? He went to a source of comfort, and you, you say, man, let, let me just say something. If you're here this morning and, and you don't know Jesus Christ, I, I trust that every one of you know Christ is your Savior today. I can't see your heart, but I trust you are. If you're here this morning lost and you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, God only knows how sorry I feel for a human being in this society, in the day that we live in, outside the body of Christ, excluded from the power of the Holy Spirit. How, how, does, a, how does a man make it? Think about it. I was thinking about that yesterday. Afternoon. How does a man make it that's not saved in this world that we're living in? I, I tell you how, he doesn't. He doesn't. He hunts a liquor store. He finds a pill pusher on the street corner. He runs from clinic to clinic, from one detox to another. He tries to find something that will give him comfort. But the Bible tells me that Jesus went to a desert place and got along with God and unloaded his loss of John the Baptist. You see, you, got, you and I have a heavenly father at the throne, on the throne today and, and he's just waiting for us to come talk to him. He's just waiting for us to come talk to him. Listen, the Bible tells me Jesus went to a desert place. He got along with God. He unloaded the losses of John and he laid them down and left those hurts and problems there. I'm telling you this morning, you and I, if the Lord tarries even this year, we're going to have some losses. We'll have some losses. May I say something to you this morning? That there, there's a source of comfort today if you'll go to him. But you've got to know that you know that you know that you have a source of comfort when you have a loss. You, you, if you don't get anything else, when you leave here today, say, hey, isn't it good? Isn't it good when things begin to fall apart? We've got a source of comfort. We've got someone we can go to. And he'll never leave us and he'll never forsake us. Philippians 3.10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering 
being made conformable to his death. Psalmist said in Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 3, 24, When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Psalms 3, verse 4 and 5. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lead not thy own understanding. We'll give you a personal illustration, if you don't mind. In my own life, in my own life, I know it seems like so many years ago, 42 years ago, 1979, my mother went home to be with the Lord. It was one of the hardest things I ever dealt with in the ministry at that time because I didn't understand. I just led her to Christ two years prior to that. Uh, she was an alcoholic and she got saved. It meant I, I was serving, I was doing the best I could. I was serving the Lord. I was a full-time student at Tennessee Temple University. Ms. Lady was a student there. Both our kids were in Christian schools. We were driving 45 miles one way to pastor a little church for three years there as we was going through college. I was as right with God as I'd ever been in my life. Matter of fact, I'm just going to say this. I was as right with God as any person in this building is today. Listen, I don't care how right with God you are. You're still going to lose. I don't care if you're walking the straight and narrow. I don't care if you're full of the Holy Spirit and he's coming out your ears. You're going to lose. I'll tell you one thing. Loss, losses comes to winners. It, it, it's what you do with your losses that will determine if you get a chance to win again. It's what you do with your losses to determine if you're going to win again. I said Jesus found the source of his strength. When my mother died, I, I, read, I remember it like it was yesterday. I slipped into a bedroom. I locked the door. I laid flat on my face, and I poured my heart out to God. Wept like a baby. I don't know for how long. You see, I wanted my mother to see me graduate from college. I was a year away from graduating. I wanted to, my mother to hear her son preach a sermon. She never got to hear me preach. I wanted my mother to see her grandkids grow up. As I lay on my face before God, I don't know what happened, but I do know this. I, I thought, well, God, all I can do is worry, get mad at you, quit preaching and serving you, and say it doesn't work. That went through my heart and my mind. Or I can keep serving and trusting the sovereign hand of God. And walk on knowing that you are able to exceedingly, do exceedingly above anything I can ask or think. Now, God, here's your boy down here. Here I am, Lord, laying on the floor, weeping like a two-year-old. God, I've lost something. I've lost someone. But I want to announce to you that when I got up off that floor, I left that room that day, Charlie. That's never been a problem with me since. You say, I didn't say, listen, don't misunderstand what I said. I didn't say that I didn't miss my mom. One day, about, maybe in a year, after she had passed, I, I walked over and I picked the phone up, the four cell phones, and I started dialing a number, and I put it down real quick because Rita walked in. And she said, who are you calling? I said, nobody. She said, calling your mama, aren't you? I said, uh-huh. She said, you know it's long distance, don't you, smarty Alec? Yeah, I know. How do you, listen, I can keep serving you. I can keep trusting the sovereign hand of God and walk on knowing that you're able to exceedingly above anything I ever ask. <clears throat> I, want, I, I want to announce to you that when I got up off that floor today, like I said, it wasn't any problems. Did I, want, did I miss my mama? Yes, I did. Do I still miss it? Yes, I do. I, listen, I'm going to tell you the worst thing you can do with your loss is to sit around and wonder and dream about what could have been. That, that's really the biggest problem you've got. Not only must you know the source of your problem, but number two, you must recognize that when you go to the source of your comfort, there will be a crowd. i basically talking to Christian people, but it, it's true somewhat to non-Christians. There were people 
when word got around that John the Baptist had beheaded, there were people who came from everywhere when they heard that Jesus was in despair. Jesus had lost one of his kinfolks, his best, one of his friends. In your losses, there are people who understand what you're feeling and hurt with you. Brother Paul, I used to at funerals and just ignorance, not do anything to hurt anybody. But I'd make a statement. I'd say, boy, I know how you feel. Well, until I buried my mother, I didn't know how they felt. Until I buried my stepfather, I didn't know how they felt. In a 28-day period of time when I buried two sisters and a brother, I didn't know how they felt. But I know how you feel now. I know how you feel now. I say, preacher, why are you telling us this? Because you're going to lose. You're not going to lose again. And your losses, there are people who understand. That, that's why, listen to me as I draw it to a close. That's why, that's why, you people listening to me, watching today, that's why you need to be faithful to the house of God all the time when you have a loss. It does good to get around people who are praising God and, and, and who have a, a loss also. God will always see, I believe, it's been true my 36 years here, 50 years in the ministry, God will always see that there's some people who will come around and love you and pray for you and lift you up. My mother died. So many people came and called and she lived in Montgomery and I was in Chattanooga and did the funeral there and so many people, even people drove down from Chattanooga. I'm saying God will make sure that people around you. The third and last thing, if you are foolish if you let revenge eat you up. You're foolish if you let revenge eat you up. Pardon me. I looked in commentaries and studied and looked here and looked there and never did I ever see where Jesus went after Herod. Jesus and John were kinfolks. You, you know what I know about this church and just about every church I step foot in? The, our churches have a lot of revenge setting in them. Oh, I'm going to get even with that woman. I'm going to get even with that man. There, there, there are plenty of people in this world who can cause you to lose, but most of your losses will come through people, okay? You, you, listen, you, you, you can try to get even. You can try to forget about it. I said this a hundred times. If you spend your life getting even, you'll never get ahead. Besides that, Jesus said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. You know why he said that? Because you and I don't know how to deal with people. Acts chapter 12. <clears throat> and upon a set day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel, set upon the throne and made a oration unto, <clears throat> unto them. And the people gave a shout saying, it's the voice of a God, not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he had not, <clears throat> because he gave not God the glory and he was eating the worms and gave up the ghost. Better be careful how you monkey around with God. You better be careful how you monkey around with the things of God and the people of God. So my question this morning, what are you doing about your losses? He, I heard this two, last two weeks, listen to this. He left me, and I hope he dies and goes to hell. Wow. I, I'm not sure that anyone who wished that on someone else has saved themselves. But sometimes our pain runs real deep. A lady, he lost her baby. She'd come to church and she'd hate every woman there that had a baby. Now don't, don't I said, why don't you go, don't you sit there and start judging somebody. You don't know what, how you'd feel. She wouldn't keep the nursery and she said God was her worst enemy. Listen, friends, you, you need today to come to your source of comfort. You may be here today and you say, Preacher, I don't know him. Why don't you come today and get to know him? You say, I, I'm a Christian, but I'm having a hard time. Hey, why don't you come today and cast your cares upon him, okay? I want you to just stand with me for prayer. <clears throat> just stand with me for prayer just for a moment. <clears throat> hey. <clears throat> well,
while they're getting ready. Matter of fact, I want you to look up here. I want you to look up here. Hold off on that second verse. Leave that one right there. I want you to look at this verse, and I'm going to give you another verse, okay? And, and I, want you, I want you to apply this verse to your heart right now. I want you to apply it to those, maybe someone you know, you could go home today and call and give them these two verses and say, hey, I'm hurting. First Peter 5, 7, casting what? All your care upon him, for he what? You believe that? You believe he cares for you today? I know he does. Look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you what? Rest. Rest. You need to come today for strength. Come today for comfort. Maybe you're going through a situation. Maybe y'all just come give us all today. Ask God for strength, for comfort. You're not saved today, come for salvation. If you're not active in a church, come for church membership. Come for read that. Just come today for comfort, okay? Let's bow our heads, please. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I'm going to pray. The altar is open if you need to slip out and come. Father, I pray you'll take these words today. God, encourage us. Father, I've been here so long and seen so much hurt in people's lives. And God, I've seen so many people, Lord, in my own family, turn and run from you rather than surrender their lives. And God, I just, I just pray today, Holy Spirit of God, if it's one person today that gets encouraged, Father, we give you the glory and the praise in Jesus' name, amen. Let's just sing a verse together, Brother Johnny. <clears throat> you need to come, you come. And oh, I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms, the riches of your love God speak to you. will always be enough, nothing compares to your embrace, light of the world forever. And oh, I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms, the riches of your love will always be enough, nothing compares to your embrace, light of the world forever Let's bow our head just for a moment. We're going to be closing just a moment. Heads are bowing, eyes are closed, and I'll do one other verse, and we'll close. But while just the Lord's looking today, I wonder if you're here today and say, Pastor, just remember me in prayer. I, I'm struggling, and, and that's all right. I, I'll slip my hand up first, okay? Just how, how many have joined me today? Preacher, I'm just struggling with some things in my life. God bless you. I am. I, I, I am. I am. I am. God bless you. So many of you. I wonder if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I, I'm not a member of a church, a local church here in town, and I've just been praying about it. Would you? I'm not going to ask you to come. I'm just going to pray for you. Anywhere like that today, Pastor, you need that church home. You need that church family. Someone, God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. Anyone else real quick? God bless you, sir. God bless you. I say our doors are open to you. We welcome you. You, and if you need to come today, you say, I don't know what to do. You just come. We'll take care of all that stuff, okay? Father, take this last stanza now. Get honor to yourself for those who are hurting, for those who, uh, Lord, are praying for someone else who's hurting a friend or family member, God, for those who may be seeking a church home. God, you have your will now. Heads are bowed, eyes closed. They're going to sing one stanza, and we're going to close. You need to come right now. You come. Come on. And oh, I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms, the riches of your love will always be enough, nothing compares to your <coughs> embrace, light of the world forever.
riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever reign. Light of the world forever reign. Thank you. you. May be seated. We've got a baby dedication, all right? <clears throat> all right, so y'all come on down. Come on down up here, Brother Josh, Brother Johnny. Just line them up across here. Let me see her. Oh, she's sleep. No, she's got them halfway she's open. Awake. She's kind of awake. Jack's sister's kind of awake. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a few people ask us over the years, why do y'all do this? You don't baptize the babies. Well, we do, too. If they come down the aisle and say, hey, I'm coming today, confess my sins, and ask God to forgive me, then we'll baptize them. But this is more for the parents and grandparents than it is for the baby. And, boy, this, this baby's got a great family, so don't blow it, Josh. And uh, uh, <laughs> oh, They're good people. <clears throat> Elizabeth Ray, right? And she was born August 9th. August 9th. How much she weigh? Seven pounds, 9.9 ounces. Who's her favorite grandma? I'm not going to ask that. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Amy is ready to raise her hand right now. But God bless y'all. And God bless you, Jack. This is your, your baby sister. And we're going to pray right now that God will just put a big old hedge around y'all and protect y'all and bless the baby. And both of you, when you get older and come to know Jesus as your personal Savior, that would be awesome. Amen? Amen? All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this family. Lord, we thank you for folks who are just faithful. And God, they just love you, and they're here because they want to be. And so, Father, I pray that you put a hedge around this family. Lord, we pray for the baby now, Mrs. Elizabeth Ray there, that, God, you would put a hedge around her and protect her. Lord, give her good health. And, uh, Lord, thank you for Rebecca and Josh and what a great job they do. And, Lord, we thank you for Jack and pray you bless him. And, uh, Lord, for Johnny and Stephanie, God, you bless them, Father. And Bill, Lord, you bless him. And, uh, Lord, I pray that you just have your will in our lives today. In Christ's name, amen. Did I get a... I forgot Amy. I forgot Amy. Bless Amy too, Lord. <clears throat> All right. You got something for me, Mama? <clears throat> We should have done this at the first service. <laughs> All right. He got her a, a Bible and a certificate. God bless. Let's give him a good hand. Okay. All right. We're, we're going to go ahead and stand. We're going to be dismissed. I don't want you coming by. Okay. Uh, and unless they want you to, I, I just, we'd rather watch the COVID thing. Okay. I mean, I'm serious. I'm serious. We love you. All right. Hey, Wednesday night. Now, Wednesday night, we're meeting in here for the first 15 minutes, and we'll go to the classes. I've got the sign-up sheets over here. Do me a favor. If you're not, if you're not going to want to eat pizza, let me know, and we'll over order. Just let me know right after the services. Say, hey, I'm not going to be eating, but we'll have pizza. We'll social distance as much as we can, and that's Wednesday night. Okay, God bless you. See ya. <laughs>